Okay, we're here with um, with Tristan Lydon. Tr- Tristan, it's great to talk to you. You're someone I've really wanted to catch up with for a, for a fair while, but it, it, this isn't the circumstance I wanted to do with it, do it in. Um, yeah. Everyone will have seen this week. You've you've sadly had to announce your re- retirement from football. Ev- everyone's gutted for you, but there's been a lot of love come back in in your direction after after you've made your announcement. How are you? How are you feeling about everything? It, it must have been really tough. Um, I feel I feel better now. Um, initially, like so, I made the decision in about January. Um, oh, the like the weeks leading up to it was tough. Um, but afterwards, like I, you get over it. Um, this is, it is what it is. It's not in. Obviously, the decision was in my control, but the injury wasn't in my control. I couldn't. Um, we tried everything we can for the last two and a half years. I had three operations countless hours of physio treatment at different specialists um looking at me and uh I had to travel to Leicester a few times I had to travel to North London a few times so um the physio's put in a lot Matt Bayard uh, especially I can't thank him enough um the last two and a half years have been difficult um so after I made my decision things became a bit easier um and then after I put the post up on Sunday, um, of, it hit me a little bit more um, just because of the messages that are coming in. The messages were very nice and, and touching. Um, but then you, you get over these things and it is what it is and you've got to move forward with life. Yeah, it's only 22 games for Ipswich, but it's pretty yeah. clear by reading those messages, like the impression that you made yeah. over that time. We'll talk about a lot of those those yeah. games and those, those good times a little bit later. But... Um, how how did you ultimately come to the this decision? The injury obviously dates back to the summer of 2019. You've said you've made that decision in in January of 2022. Yeah. So yeah. that's a fair old way down the track. What what goes <laughs> into you having having to make that call? Um, so obviously I uh, I got after my I played at MK Dons last season. Um, I tore my hamstring in training in about April May. Um, and then came the end of the season, I was released or whatever. Um, and then I was still having discussions with the club and the physio. The physios had um, had two physios at the time. One was John Green, um, who Kieran Dyer worked with in his in his past, and obviously Matt Bayard. And then we had discussions with them. Um, and then with the surgeon, went in to have another surgery in June. So that was my third surgery. Um, had the whole preseason. Uh, rehab and and stuff and then the club were grateful enough uh, to give me a a contract until January obviously no one knows that so the club allowed me to get fit until January Um, but my ankle was never right Um, back in training and stuff I could still feel it I was never the same same player and uh, so yeah I had to had to make this decision in January so what during during those months you were you were on that short term contract? You're right. Nobody yeah. nobody knew about that one. That's great for yeah. the club that they they've give, they've given you that, and and so yeah. they should really for a young man who's who's been with them since the age of nine. But yeah. what were you doing during that time? Was it kind of training with the younger the younger players? Yeah, so it was, it was uh is rehab um from June to maybe October, um then came back started training with um Kieran and the under twenty threes. Um, yeah, and it was just never right. So yeah, to, uh, to make the decision in January. Was there ever a prospect in that in that time of, of kind of going any anywhere else to 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 see if things would would be better for you, or was there a did did you need to make that decision in January, or why, um, why, why at that point? There was, uh, I think there was a few clubs in the national league that were asking me to go and train and stuff. Um, but I mean, it was such a long process, two and a half years. It is, it does get a bit tiring. You try everything you can, and um, these things don't work. Um, so yeah, I kind of had to make the decision. Um, and uh, yeah, it is what it is. But you know, I can't do anything about it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so it was your rather than being told by a doctor or anything. It was it kind of your call. Oh no, I, have, I had discussions with the doctor. No. Yeah, no, I, I did go and see the doctor. Um, he 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 said, yeah, he, he doesn't think I can have a career in the sport. Um, and then the decision's in my hands. Um, but if the doctor's telling me that um, I'm having injections every two to three months, 
Um, I've done, a, I've had quite a few injections in my ankle, steroid injections and, um, stuff like that. So you got to think about, I had to think about my future as well. I don't want to be, um, not being able to walk in the, in mm. 10 years time. And if the doctor's telling me he thinks it's best, um, then I had to, I had to do it. Yeah. Um, obviously a really tough call and it's one that, that goes back, as you say, a, a long time. This, yeah. this is years we're talking about here. I, yeah. I can remember quite vividly um, the the night it happened for you at Notts County. What what are your what are your memories of that? We're going back to July the twenty third, twenty nineteen. What are your memories yeah. of that? Um, so obviously I was um, I was playing left back. Um, I think first half I was okay, and then you go out for the second half, and uh, things are uh, as expected. They're going all right, and then um, we had a throw in. Um, and I think I've thrown it to Ems or Corey. Um, and then, yeah, I've received the ball back, gone to pass it inside and um, bang, my ankle's, my ankle's facing the wrong way. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I can remember that night fairly clearly. I can't remember the pain or anything in my ankle, um, but I can remember everything afterwards. I can remember going off the pitch, going to hospital, getting my ankle clicked back in place. I can remember everything about the night um and and from then on really yeah yeah and at that at that point i think paul paul lambert that night yeah. was right it was on the near touchline wasn't it I yeah think, it was yeah yeah near the dugouts and stuff yeah. so i remember we spoke to paul after the game and he said that there, there wasn't kind of any blame attached to anyone mm. it was just one of those things is yeah did, 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 did you feel that way it, uh yeah the, I, I don't i don't blame the player uh he was a, I, I think he was a trialist at the time um so obviously he's trying to impress and whatever um i'm not sure if we're playing a, a league club that that type of tackle is put in just because it's pre-season um and i think if it was a league game there might have been more scrutiny on the tackle but um i don't hold any blame against anyone um it's football he's he tried to impress because he was on trial or whatever so i don't blame Blame, blame him for whatsoever. Blame him for what happened. Yeah, it, it would be easy to though, wouldn't it? Yeah. But, but but I guess that's something you've come to terms with as part of all of this, as yeah, much exactly. as anything. Um, you know, football's football's football. Um, people fly into tackles all the time. You look at in the Premier League, these things happen. Um, you never think it's going to happen to you. Um, like I remember a few years ago, um, Mon Monty, um, the New Zealand. Yep. He, he, I think he had a similar injury. Um, I remember seeing an injury in the NBA, um, Gordon Hayward, and you, oh, you never, yeah. Think, yeah, you never think these things are going to happen to you, um, but they do. Um, and I'd encourage people to take out injury insurance as well because, um, like I say, you never think these things are going to happen, and these things happen, and at least you have something to fall back on. Then, mm -hmm. whereas now, whereas if you didn't. You have to start your life from scratch. Hmm. Did, have you, did you have insurance? Yeah, I took out yeah. insurance. Yeah. yeah, is that is that? I've always been interested by that. Is that something you've had to do yourself, or is it something that the club have kind of made sure that? Nah, uh, the, I, I, you had? I, my, my agents helped me with that. Yeah, well, that's yeah. that's good to hear that you've got that. Yeah. yeah, for any young player listening, it sounds like yeah. that would be um be a good thing to have at, at the time. Tristan, we're obviously talking broken ankle here and, and some ligament damage as well. We were talking six months out, I think, was the initial prognosis. Yeah. But what what was the journey like along the way? Because obviously, it, it turned out to be um obviously co considerably longer um, yeah. than that before we saw you again. Yeah, so I had my surgery the week after I broke my leg, um, and then um. From then on, it was just a long process of uh, recovering and and things like that. I went to um, ho I went on holiday in November 2019. It would have been, um, and we all thought that would have helped the ankle because we there was still hardly like I think in October I was still limping, um, so there was still hardly any progress in the ankle. Um, so we thought that the holiday, the heat, that, that it would help. Um, and it did help only slightly. Um, so when I came back, I tried running on the anti-gravity machine. Again, I was running when I was limping. It was never right. 
And then we made the decision in January 2020 to go back in for another operation. Um, I think that was on the 27th of January. Um, and then obviously then from then my season's finished. Um, we look to go again the season after. Uh, I, I was supposed to be back in pre-season. Um, and then I think COVID hit. So then uh, it's another extension because you know, I'm not getting the treatment daily. I'm not uh, as I was on. I was on FaceTime to Wibs once a week, um, and that that helped. But it, it, there's nothing like having hands on treatment or anything like that. So then COVID comes. We we'll go back in. We we'll go back late. Uh, start over again, um, and then uh, come back to training. Um, hurt my ankle again and then uh, it was just so, such a long process into it and then I finally came back in February 2021 played a few games um and then pulled my hamstring and then that finished me off as well because the hamstring was pulled because of my ankle because I couldn't get any range in my ankle to to decelerate or anything like that I've mm. ever ended up doing a grade three hamstring um and then another surgery so yeah, it's been been a, a long two and a half years. Oh man, it's it's so it's so cruel. I can remember yeah. um, very vividly sitting with you outside that weird hotel in Germany um, by the windmill, yeah. and we yeah. had we had we had a chat about um, you'd just come back from Scotland, and then the yeah. the, the season where you, you didn't really play, and then yeah. you'd, you'd started playing left back, and it was it was yeah. going pretty well. That like, it, yeah. needed a left back at that point. Luke Garber mm -hmm. hadn't signed, I don't think, and you'd you'd made a bit of an a, bit of an impression and um and and then things can just be so cruel can't they that at yeah. a time where you were really looking to make your mark yeah um yeah i was I, I played the first game in germany at left back i played quite well um and then i've come back played cole U, left back um did well in that game and then i started at Notts county probably would have started at cambridge and there was talk of me starting the first league game um but um yeah, it's all in the past now. I can't can't look back at it of what could it have been. Um, it is what it is, and yeah, yeah got to move forward. Yeah, what about the support you've had from the club over that time? It, obviously, you've just told us that you were mm -hmm. that they gave you a contract. I assumed they would let you kind of rehab and stuff there. Yeah, but they've they've obviously helped you out. Yeah, in, um, in ways like in ways like that. What about kind of teammates, old, former teammates, current teammates? Mm -hmm. What support have you received over the last? Our support, the years? support's been exceptional um, over the last. Because obviously we had such a good changing room. The uh, until last year we had Chambers, Scusi, Sizi. Um, so the, the the support in the changing room was always there. They helped me as best as they could. Um, even now, I still speak to a lot of them. Um, I I messaged Scusi a couple of times. I, I speak to Flynn. Uh, all basically all the time. Um, Andre, obviously, he had suffered a knee injury, so he knew it was like going through a long term injury. Um, so the support was the support was phenomenal. Um, and then even when Paul Cook came in, obviously he wouldn't he he I didn't do the injury when he was there, but when he came in, he was very good to me. Um, even the current current boys, um, I go in uh, occasionally. They'll ask how I'm doing, how everything is. Um, so the support's always been there from my teammates, from the staff. Um, like I said, Matt Bayard been phenomenal the last two and a half years. Him and his him and his team. Um, I can't thank can't thank him enough. Um, so yeah, the support's been always there. Kieran, Brian, Klug, um, they 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 did so much for me. Even now, um, Leo Neil, uh, they both they they say I can go in and start shadowing some coaching. Um, oh, I've been we're speaking to Adam about that um so yeah it's been it's been good the club of the club have supported me quite well yeah well maybe yeah. we'll get on to what what's next in a yeah. in a little bit but um I'm just going to flash up a bit some will be watching on video and others will just be listening on podcast yeah. just a picture here this is you coming on against um against MK Dons your comeback yeah. game in in April of April of last year bizarrely this was actually the day after the takeover wasn't it this was supposed yeah. to be which imagine what that would have been like in the in the ground if there were, yeah. wasn't just empty stands but um what was this day like for you um it has been a long time coming yeah. um and it was half an hour as a substitute in the second yeah. half of 
uh, another nil nil draw, which was the yeah. theme at, at that point. But you you look like your old self, Tristan. You were mm. you were the Tristan Nyden that we'd seen so much in in 2017-18. Yeah. Um, what was this day like for you? I was it was unexpected. Um, I remember we had a 23s game on the Monday. Uh, I think it was Bristol City, and I was I, I, I so when I when I play games, I wouldn't train for two days. Um, I remember Kieran phoning me on the Tuesday saying, you better train tomorrow because there's a possibility of you being on the bench on Saturday. Um, so all of that came. And then on the Friday, Paul Cook had said, yeah, you're going to be coming on um, on tomorrow. So um, I knew I was going to be coming on. It wasn't like it was the, the, it was unexpected me being on the bench, but I knew I was going to be, I was going to be coming on. But yeah, it was, it was very good to, to have, had the trust and um, and the backing that I could come back and play and even even then people say I look the same and but I didn't feel the same. Um, I could like I couldn't stop my ankle sore, um, but yeah, no, it was it was it was good to to have made an appearance um, one more time at, at Portman Road. Mm. So at that point, did you you still you still felt things weren't weren't yeah. great at that point? Because from 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 for us from our perspective watching mm. that the game, it, you, you honestly looked you looked the same. You looked yeah. you looked obviously maybe a little a little rusty. You hadn't played yeah. for a couple of couple of years, yeah. but it's um you you look the same player. So yeah. it, but you didn't feel it. No, I didn't. I didn't feel the same. Um, just my ankle just it will feel heavy. It felt tight um even like in training and stuff i would have to take instead of being able to do something like with one step i'd have to do it in little steps to to compensate um yeah. but yeah you know what can i do mm. you were were you thinking about retirement at this point or no. was that something no I uh, this... nah, I, I wasn't i wasn't i wasn't thinking about it uh i thought well, maybe we could give it a bit more time and it might change um and then the third operation and so on and so on. Then you start, mm. then it creeps into your head. Yeah. So how, how long after that was the hamstring then? After that game? Uh, when, what, what, when was that? That would have been April. I uh, Probably yeah. two, two weeks after that. That, must, that must have been a killer. That must have, yeah. that must have, that could break someone, couldn't it? It's, yeah, no, it, it could. Um, I, for me, I think my mentality, I think I've got a positive mentality. I don't let, if what I, like if if something's not in my control, there's no point getting angry over it. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm. So I, I, you know, obviously it was hard to take, but you've got to get over the things that aren't in your control. Um, you've got to move forward, and you've got to think of things that will better your mind. Think of, you've got to think of things positively. Um, so yeah, it affected me for maybe a day, a day or two, and then then just got to recover yeah back to yeah. back to the rehab again exactly yeah <laughs> yeah um i spoke to luke hyam recently for mm. one of these and obviously he he's sort of a year down the track having had to uh, announce his own retirement yeah. a, a lot longer in his career than you've certainly yeah. had to but he he talked about um he talked about kind of losing your football career in terms of grief and mm. in in many ways and kind of loss of identity which i can com can completely mm. understand that for someone like both of you actually uh are ipswich town boys born and raised like yeah. through the through the club from the age that you you, you both joined that's really tough isn't it like, to, yeah. to have that kind of pulled away pulled away from you yeah no it is you know i've i've been at ipswich i've never known to have any other job um so my friends used to joke with me say yeah you're done at two o'clock or whatever um, you have an easy life. So I've, I've never known any other way of life. I've never gone to college or obviously we did college at Ipswich, but it was once a week or twice a week. Um, I've never gone to college. I've never gone to uni. I've never had another job. Um, even when I was at school, it's football, football, football. Um, so yeah, it is like for me at the moment, I feel, I feel fine, but it might hit me maybe a few months down the line when people are going back to preseason and I'm not. Um, mm. So yeah, it might hit me then, but at the moment I'm dealing with it. Okay. But maybe it's cause it's mid season and, and stuff like that. So um, I think it, it might be hard dealing with the fact that I have to 
find a new job or whatever like that but at the moment i'm, I'm fine we'll mm. we'll see what happens in two two months two three yeah. months there's a lot of people out there who who will support you i'm sure yeah. um you've mentioned you've rolled off people there like luke chambers cole skews yeah. freddie sears all of your sort of the younger team it's like flynn not yeah. andre maybe luke wolfenden um yeah you've got a support network there haven't you yeah no i've 100 my family um i'm so i'm going to zimbabwe next week so yep. i'll be seeing family that i haven't seen for three years um my mum, my mum's a huge help my dad my sisters my brothers um my girlfriend you know they they my friends i've got so many people around me that are so good and and can help me um and not just them i can get on the phone to kieran tomorrow um Today I could speak to him if, 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 if I needed anything, and not just him. There's so many people, um, my agents, my so many people in the club, Brian, um, that if I needed help, I could get on the phone and speak to them. Mm. K- Kieran Dyer is obviously someone that's been, uh, he's, he's kind of in the news a little bit at the mm. moment. He's, he's left his role at the club, but yeah. you, there's so many people that speak really, really yeah. highly of him. What is it about Kieran that's that's so supportive to particularly young players? It seems, yeah. I think because he's so honest and open, um, players uh, take into that. Um, he won't, uh, how do I say instead of that word? He won't <laughs> talk rubbish. Um, like, he'll be, he'll be honest straight away. He won't um, go, uh, like, find an easy way around things. Um, he, was a, he was a really good guy and probably one of the most important people in my short career um from when i turned 13 or 14 i had one training session with him and then i think from that that training session um he really took to me and yeah he, he, he really helped in my career i'm sure he's going to re- really help you in, in whatever's next as yeah. well um how are I, how are you on the ankle at the moment are you able to kind of go to the gym and gym and stuff? yeah no I, I, yeah. I can have a normal life it's just football in life that was difficult Right. Um, so I can, I can, I can, I can even play like six sides and and stuff like that. But to play professional football and train every day, play at that level, play at that that intensity, that was the problem. But I can, I can go and run and and do do all all of that. It's just I can't play football. Yeah, and that's why you've yeah. made the decision, isn't it? Yeah. To, to make to make sure that that remains the case for uh, yeah. for a long time. So um, so what's What's next for Tristan Nydam then? You said you've said there about some offers to go in and, and shadow coaching and, and things like that. Does is, does that interest you? Kind of getting involved uh, in that? Yeah, so I've been doing some coaching for a company in Colchester called EPC, uh, Essex Professional Coaching, for the last three weeks, um, and I've I've quite enjoyed that. I've done some one to ones. I've done like I've shadowed their coaches. Ipswich have said I could go in and shadow coaches there. So I um, mean, something I've, I I didn't look to do. Let's say end of last year. It's only the closer to the time my injury um like I, I thought in my head i'd be retiring that coaching came into my head um so so it, it is a route i could look to go down and then i've been thinking about maybe going to going to do a study as well at a uni or or something like that um so yeah i've, I've i'm gonna take the month in zimbabwe talk to my family see what they think about things and uh and then we'll go from there mm. really if you if, if coaching is an option i guess you only have to look to the the current manager of, of Ipswich, mm-hmm. Kieran McKenna, who at yeah. the same age as you actually, I think, had to retire. Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've spoken to, to to Kieran McKenna as well. I spoke to him just before just before I left. I had some good discussions with him. He's a really nice guy as well. Um, yeah, he, he was in the same situation. Obviously, he had a hip, hip injury. Um, and then I think he went back to uni, did some courses at uni. And then from there, he was working at Spurs and then obviously went to United and then ended up here. Yeah, so there's still a life in football there potentially. If yeah, you, exactly. If you want, yeah. what would you uh, what would you do at uni? What what kind of uh, what kind of thing would you look to um, major again? Probably something in sport, um, or like I've been looking at Essex and there's stuff in like property development, and so I'd probably either go down that route or go down the sport route. Okay, some options. Yeah. It's good to you, yeah. you clearly you clearly got some options out yeah. out in front of you. Um, how do you look back on it all then? Obviously, ended far far earlier than you you ever yeah. would have would have hoped but yeah. i also imagine at the same time you probably got a bit a lot further than you ever you ever dreamed you might because so yeah. many so many people listening to or watching this 
I'll include myself in this, would have be, becoming a professional footballer is mm. w- was what so many wanted to do. And, and you lived that dream, yeah. Tristan. You you did it. You achieved it. And you yeah. were very good at it. So um, how do you look back on it all? Um, I Obviously, I expected more for myself. I had uh, dreams of playing in the Premier League and and doing all of that. Um, but like, I really enjoyed my, really enjoyed myself um, from when I was nine up until now. Um, uh, the sport gave me everything. Um, it allowed me to to look after my family a little bit. And um, and I, I was happy playing the sport. Um, it's anything that people dream of. Um, and yeah, from when I made my debut, um, you thought, like I thought, yeah, this, I never thought I made it, but I thought that like, this is, this is what I want to do. I want to keep progressing. Um, I remember telling someone when I was a, a scholar, I was like, yeah, in two years, I'm going to be playing in the Premier League and whatever. So I did have big ambitions. Mm-hmm. Um, and unfortunately, um, football is, doesn't go the way you want it all the time. Um, but like I'd say to any youngster, you just got to keep pushing, um, keep working hard, do your stuff in the gym, um, do your stuff on the pitch, uh, do extras, do all of that. Um, because if you do that, coaches will look at it and and um, and it will really help. But my in my short football career, I really enjoyed myself and I really thought I made the most of it. Um, and obviously, I like the like of TC and Mick, they're the ones who gave me an opportunity. Um, so I can't be more thankful to them. But mm. I really enjoyed my football football career. Mm. I was going to ask you about Mick McCarthy. Obviously, yeah. he, he gave you you a debut. He gave so many actually of mm-hmm. of your of your close friends. Yeah. I imagine were given their debuts by yeah. by Mick McCarthy. I put that picture up again, which is of your debut, I believe, yeah. at, at Luton, which was yeah. also Wolfie. I think made his debut that night as well. Yeah, Wolfie so, came uh, off Wolfie, I think, yeah. Yeah, what do you remember? What do you remember of that of that night? That must be a, a really special one. Yeah, I think I started a bit shaky. Um, like the first five ten minutes, I remember a pass came on my right foot or something, and I shanked it out of play. Um, and then I just grew into the game. Um, I remember the first goal; I got it from Chambo, played it to Burson, and Burson played Didzy, and we scored from there. Um, but no, I, I I do I do remember that game. Um, I played with Flynn and Scusi, uh, played just in front of them. So to be fair, all of the games I played in, because there wasn't many, I remember quite like I remember them quite fondly. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I remember my footballing career only because mm. short. If I played more games, I might. I might <laughs> <struggle>. <laughs> were you were you expecting to be involved as much as you were that season? Because um, you and Flynn both kind of. Um, yeah shot into the picture and made a real yeah. impression I, I wanted to make my debut the year before um because i was on the bench the year before against huddersfield um and then i went away with england and i remember mick saying um like if you come back fit and healthy you'll probably make your debut this year unfortunately i got injured away with england um and then i came back played in the 23s game and got injured in that 23s game um so I unfortunately had to wait. I didn't make my debut that year. Then we went on pre-season um, with the team to Ireland. We did well in Ireland. And then first league game, unfortunately, that's when Doz had done his knee. So Flynn came on. Um, and then the Tuesday, the Tuesday after that, we all played, made our full debuts or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I, remember, I remember things clearly. And like, again, like uh, I said, Mick, Mick and TC were huge for me that year. Um, but yeah, yeah. What what was it about? Because uh, obviously Mick McCarthy, his his kind of time in charge has been yeah. hugely critiqued by by so many. But but you all loved him, didn't you? It's yeah. Uh, I it, I've never was... never met one of you that said a bad word about Mick McCarthy or or Terry Connor. I don't think there was any players or staff that disliked him. Um, he was uh, like hugely respectful to every everyone. Um, anyone could go and speak to him. Um, but he still had that respect. Um, he was a really, like, really nice guy. There was always fun. There was always energy around the place with the, with them too. 
Um, but yeah, like even I, I heard him shout once um, in a preseason game. Um, and I, 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 to be fair, so that was my first like appearance I played when I was I played against Cambridge. Um, and I heard him shout, but people say he's not like, people had said he's not like that, that he hardly ever shouted. Um, and then I found that out the next year, you'd hardly ever shout. You just talk, if you lose, he'll just talk to you. Um, but yeah, he's a, him and TC are both really nice people. Hmm. Um, I'm just going to flash up another picture here, which is something that you, you managed to achieve. You, uh, you played for Ipswich Town yeah. against, against Norwich. I guess that must be. The, the kind of the atmosphere at Portman Road that day uh, must be one of the one of the better memories from your short time. Yeah, no, it was uh, in that picture you're showing. I think I dived and we won a free kick from it. <laughs> <laughs> is that what that little smile is? You... Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, I remember that. Uh, I think I was I was very nervous before the game. I remember Mick asking me, "Am I right?" And um, like the first pass again, I did. I was nervous. I just didn't know what to do. I just tried to like put it in the corner. Um, but again, once when you're out there, you don't really take in the atmosphere or anything like that. Um, obviously, when you're walking out, um, you do. And then when the game kicks off, it just you just blank it out and you get you have to get on with your job. Yeah, it's um, and your job in- included just winding up. Where's Hulaham or close yeah. to pick her up again? He he, uh, I think he thinks you dived as well, and you've yeah. all right. You yeah, you've got Jonas, uh, you got Jonas there to back you up. He'd, he'd yeah. one that I'd quite I'd quite like to have him behind me if I. Uh, yeah. He, he was a he was a funny character, wasn't he, Jonas Knudsen? Yeah, he was a he was a, he was a, he was a good guy, Jonas. Um, yeah, very good guy. I, I think he's doing all right at Malmo now. I don't know if he's playing or not, but um, they're a good side. But yeah, he was a that that year we had no problems in the dressing room or. I've never been in an Ipswich dressing room that has had problems. You'd speak to other people, other clubs, they say people are um, wild or whatever. And we never had that problem at Ipswich. Everyone was unbelievable in both dressing rooms from yeah. mixed tenure to the revamp to this this current dressing room. Unbe- unbelievable. Yeah. Um, obviously, we were talking about Mick McCarthy there. How how was Paul Lambert with you? Obviously, he, he looked like he was going to be the man to give you... Mm give you a go um yeah. I think he I think he would have done if 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 things yeah. hadn't worked out differently but how was he doing everything that followed uh yeah so obviously uh, he joined when I was in Scotland so he I don't think he really wanted to throw me into a team that was in the relegation zone mm. or whatever and then pre-season came around and I broke my leg and I was going to be that I was ho- well, hopefully going to be playing, um, and then obviously I broke my leg. But he came to the hospital afterwards. He was he was he was good. He was very good to me. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say we had plenty of conversations or anything like that. But um, I think he knew what w- what the situation was, and I think he just wanted the best for me. Yeah, he's very different to Mick, wasn't he? In terms yeah, of his, in terms of his character. Yeah, um, he was. You mentioned Scotland there. We'll try not to talk about it for too long, but that you must still look back on that six months with a bit of bit of frustration being so far from home and, and it not yeah. it just not happening for you. Was, I think it was five appearances in six months or something. Yeah, no, so um yeah, that wasn't wasn't the best part of my life. But again, it's an it's an experience that you have to take away with me and look back at it fondly because um it probably shaped me. I was living on my own. I was having to do things by myself. I didn't know how to work a washing machine before then. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I was having to do things on my own and and live on my own. Obviously, I didn't play as much as, it, as I would have liked. Um, but, again, that's football. Some You go to places you're not going to play at some places. Unfortunately for me, I was so far from home. So, um, it, But any opportunity I had to go home, I would have done it. Um, Unfortunately, I missed my sister's wedding as well to go and sit on the bench at Aberdeen. Um, <laughs> again, that's, that's that's football. You've got to make sacrifices in life. But yeah, has she forgiven you for that? Yeah, no, she understood. She understood. <laughs> <laughs> she understood. Uh, that's not ideal, though, is it? I guess that's a part of football we don't oh. we don't often uh, think about. If I don't want in my job, if I don't want to cover Ipswich Town's mm. game at. Uh, Oxford because my yeah. brother's getting married I can take the day off but you can't yeah exactly you can't really do that can you 
there's yeah there's so much in football that you've got to sacrifice everyone thinks footballers have it easy they some of them really don't um like uh some people miss weddings they'll miss christmas with their families because they have to travel to carlisle or whatever um and then again they they get they get holidays but some of them might not be able to spend it with their kids because their kids are in school or whatever so some footballers have it tough obviously that everyone's every footballer will probably do it again um but yeah they they do they do have it tough yeah i'm just going to yeah. flash up another picture now which um of the people listening um is yeah. of Flynn, Luke Wolfenden, Andre and and yourself. People will have seen this this picture a lot. It's from yeah. the uh just before kickoff in the home friendly West against West Ham where all of you started and all of you yeah. played really, really well that day. What yeah. how does this um how does this picture make you feel? Uh it makes me feel happy to be fair. Like uh, I don't feel any any sadness or anything because I didn't make it or um I don't feel anything like that. Um we all had played extremely well that day and we all had we all showed like our cases and whatever um but i'm i'm so happy for them th those boys um they're doing they're doing so obviously wolfie had it tough at the start of the year now he's grown into himself again doza and flynn they've been playing at at in at championship level um some obviously some fans were slating them last year but look how well they're doing now do you know what i mean um, so obviously they had some sort of talent, um, but yeah, I don't don't look at it in any sadness. I'm happy for those boys. Um, they're all my mates. So like I said, I speak to Flynn basically every day. Um, he's one of my closest pals. Um, so I don't look at it as any of sadness. In fact, I'm 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 so happy for those boys and how well they're doing. Mm. Flynn in particular sounds like he's been very, very good for Swansea yeah. this year. I've started reading now about the Premier League potentially next year for him, which I think um, anybody that's watched Flynn over the last four years might agree that there was a player that could play in the Premier League one day in there. Yeah, uh, I played with Flynn from when... So he, those three boys were all the year above me, but I started playing up from when I was maybe 13, 14. So I played with Flynn like a lot of years. Andre used to play up so i wouldn't play with andre but he used to play with flynn and wolfie and flynn was always so good um unfortunately like he didn't get as much praise when he was younger as he probably should have it was only when he really broke into the team um that he started getting the accolades that he should have had when he was younger um mm. so yeah I'm, I'm i'm so happy for flynn i'm planning on going away with him in the summer just for a weekend or something, um, but it couldn't have, have a, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Yeah, yeah. You, you're right though. That day, the the four of you played so well, and we we all came away from that match thinking, "Wow, this yeah. uh, this young this young core could um, yeah. could do the business for Ipswich." Uh, but sadly, I don't think I don't think the four of you played a single minute together in the senior no, team because I came on for Andre against MK Dons. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then obviously. I, went on loan, came back, got injured. So we never had a chance to play together again, I don't think. Um, no, that Andre was out for, he didn't play the first half of that season. Yeah. Luke went to Swindon, Swindon quite quickly afterwards and, and then Flint. Johnston. And then, you were off, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's football. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you also about your your captain, who was Luke, Luke Chambers, obviously, for mm -hmm. the vast, vast majority of your yeah. time at Ipswich. Um, what was he like as a, as a captain and as a landlord as well, because you told me before we started recording this that you were one of the uh, one of the first young players to kind of live in the the chambers annex. I want to yeah. know more about that, Tristan. I uh, yeah, no, Chamber was a, a, a real good guy. Um, you could again, you could go to him and ask for anything; he would give you advice, and uh, you always had banter with the lads. Um, so yeah, Chamber was a real good guy, and then obviously he took me in. Uh, I stayed in his annex. I was like the first per me jack brett flynn were the first people to stay in his annex and then flynn went to luton um so i think it was just the three of us maybe corey came um and yeah he, chamber took us in he catered for us and stuff um but yeah real real top guy yeah what's he yeah. what's he like at home is he the same i can't imagine he's any different to the sort of larger than life um, so when so yeah when I when I first moved in he he was hardly at home because he was doing up his house 
whereas the annex was already done. Um, so I I didn't really see him at home too much. I think it was only the next year when I'd moved out that he had moved in and then the lads got to got to see more of him at home. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, I'm, that's always fascinated me how that dynamic works yeah. with essentially because uh, he's got like four kids of his own, isn't he? Let, yeah, let alone right. having some sort of like young young teenage yeah. young teenagers moving in next door. But um, he 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 must have been an important figure. Him and Cole, obviously. Um, yeah. For for all of you young guys. Yeah. No. To um, they were they were huge for us. Like I said, I still speak to Scusi occasionally. Um, he work yeah he works at St Joe's occasionally. I think so. I've been speaking to him about his coaching badges, especially last year, just before we had all left and stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, I was speaking to him about his coaching badges and all of this, and uh, I was really, I was I was close to Scusi. Um, he was a really nice guy. Um, he'd always ask me my injuries, and and I think what was good when we first broke in is the the dressing room was so like tight knit and good. You know, we had Scusi, Chambo, Sizzy, Spenny, Jordan Spence, um, David McGoldrick, Garner, Waggy. Um, so it was Bart. really pardon Bart as well. Bart, yeah, Gertz, Bart, and then Santi came in, um, Tom Addy, Amy. So the dressing room was was really really good. You could go and ask those boys for anything, and they all kept kept like they they kept you on your feet and kept you down to earth. Yeah, it's yeah. obviously a tough day for all of you. I think you were all probably told you were moving on on the on the same day, weren't you? But like, yeah, not, well, I, think no, was a, no. I think it was a Monday. Yeah, I think yeah, that must have been a tough day for you all. Yeah, no, it was, um, especially for me because I didn't like I, I felt like I didn't get any uh, any time to to prove myself because I'd come back, played a few games, got injured, and then you get released. Um, I think for some of them they knew it was coming, whereas for me I was getting praise and stuff, and then you still get released. So uh, for me it was a mm. bit of a shock. I think to some of them, they knew it was coming. Yeah, it was a it was a funny, funny time at, at the yeah. club. Um, what what would you say with a before we before we wrap things up? Mm-hmm. Just lastly, obviously, we it's it's pretty clear what the lows the lows would be from, from yeah. your time. But what are the highs? You, you've achieved you achieved your dream, didn't you? Even even if yeah. it's um, not for as long as you'd have hoped. Yeah, I achieved my dream. I managed to play for my boyhood club that I played for since I was nine. I played for England. Um, so there's there's so many highs. Um, unfortunately, the lows were very long lows. Um, but the highs, the highs, the highs are better than the lows. Um, achieved my dream, made made new friends, um, grew, like got found out new new people. Um, had the fans support the whole way. So. Um, yeah, the highs are very high, but the lows were just very long. Mm. That's all I can say. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see you? At, are you going to pop up to Portman Road at all? Do you think? Are yeah, you, no, you come and watch? Come, I'll still come and watch games. I'm, all, I'm away for a month. Um, so I'm away from next week until end of April. So I'm not sure what if when Ipswich last game, if it's the 7th of May or something like that, if it's at home or if it's at it's home, in a, I'm, it's in it's April, I'm afraid. Well, oh, what unless we're April? talk, unless we're it's the thirtieth of April, unless you're talking about the making the playoffs, Tristan, then you'll be back. Uh, you, you you'll be back for a playoff. I'll be back for the playoff. I'll be back for the playoffs. <laughs> I'm back on the twenty sixth of April. So if the if the game on the thirtieth is at home, I'll come yeah. and watch it. If it's away, I won't. I won't be coming to watch it. Perfect. And I'm sure yeah. there'll be. Uh, it's a, it is at home. So if you do make okay. it, I'm sure there'll be. Um, yeah. There'll be a lot of people there that are very yeah. very happy to see you. And you've you've. Um, you clearly, you clearly made an impact on a lot of people in your short time, Tristan. Yeah. Some of the, some of the messages you got back the other night when you announced your news were, um, were really lovely, and hopefully they can, um, they can help at what, what must be a really difficult time. So, um, yeah. thank you so much for for joining thank me to chat. Um, me. Really sorry to to hear ha- how things have ended up, but it sounds to me like you're you're in a good place to yeah. uh, to. Uh, to make something really really good of what's next so um thank you very much tristan and good luck thank you for having me thank you so much